Today on the channel, the long wait is over as we've got the homicidal, suicidal, genocidal Sabu from Epic Toys. And the spirit of Ultimate Warrior will run forever! Welcome back to the channel for another Epic Toys Wrestling Unboxing and Review. And today on the channel from Epic Toys, we got the long-awaited, highly anticipated Sabu. But for all your Sabu needs, I guess eBay? But for all your wrestling figure needs that are not Sabu, make sure you hit up ringside collectibles. Use discount code KYLE. Save yourself 10%. And I did finally get this through the mail. The long nightmare pre-order is over. It's been a year and a half, two years. What is time if there ever was one with this Sabu figure? Now, it's not all Epic Toys' fault. It's definitely not the figure collections, asylums of the world that distributed this uh, in North America for us. As we do know, Cella Toys originally started this process. Cella Toys closed up shop moved over to Epic Toys, and Epic Toys has been releasing a lot of the stuff we've been talking about on the channel lately with the demolition and, of course, the Powers of Pain 2-packs and the retro-style figures, which really they're more known for. Same thing with Cella Toys. But this isn't fresh ground here, as we do know Cella Toys beforehand did release uh, the British Bulldog, I guess the British Bulldog, yeah, not dogs, but the dog in Dynamite Kid, which we did unbox on the channel. Check out that review. We'll compare it later on in this very video to that Dynamite Kid, amongst many other things but the long nightmare is over and Sabu is here and we're gonna see how it goes and there's only one way to find that out is we're gonna do this review like we do all the other reviews on the channel we're gonna take a look at the packaging we're gonna talk about it we're gonna unbox it we're gonna talk about it we're gonna see where it goes from there so without further ado see what old Sabu's up to right here now I'm really excited for this one however I do have some concerns and you guys know me I stay away from a lot of things uh, I want to do a review with fresh eyes but I couldn't help to notice I've seen a few instances where Sabu's legs broke off that's all I need that's all I need after the day I've had today I don't need anything breaking on me I might have an all-time meltdown so don't be rooting against me here but we'll see what happens uh, but we'll see yeah that's all we can do that's all we can do but we got Sabu big window box there perfect for autographs and if there was ever anybody to be uncensored man it's Sabu and of course part of the uncensored collection not sure if this will carry on I'm not sure we're not sure if we're going to get any more uncensored collections in the future it feels like Epic Toys is kind of honing in on retros probably leaving the elite scale behind but stranger things have happened of course there's old Sabu doing his thing on the side, giving the old point. I always love that. Classic Sabu. Sabu, a favorite of mine. This, when Sabu first came out to the national stage in ECW, even over to WWE and WCW, we never seen anything like it. It was an all-timer, if there ever was one. Epic Toys on the top, formerly Cella Toys on the top of the last one. We got a blurb back there. We're here for a blurb. We got the uncensored as well. Let's see what it says about old Sabu from a six feet tall, 220 pounds, and from Bombay, India, one of the most beautiful times or beautiful places in the world, really, Bombay. Or maybe not. It sounds good, though. Sounds good. Uh, he's homicidal, suicidal, genocidal. Trained by his uncle, the legendary Sheik, Sabu began his career in 1985 wrestling for Detroit's big-time wrestling promotion. He eventually traveled with his uncle to Japan's Frontier Martial Arts Wrestling promotion, where he received many of his iconic battle scars from participating in over two dozen no-rope barbed wire death matches. As an ECW original, Sabu had many classic encounters against, including the three-way dance for the ECW championship at the night the line was crossed against Terry Funk and Shane Douglas in his ongoing feud with Taz, two all-timers right there. No doubt, classic ECW, both those matches. Tape Trader Dreams back in the day. And it says, Epic Toys are a UK-based action figure company working hard to bring you the very best action figures for the rest of the world has to offer. Thank you so much for the support. Well, thank you for thanking me. How about that? But now we're going to bust it out. Nothing too crazy going on here. It is what it is. See you later. Goodbye. It looks like we got the double plastic. We got two extra hands and we got the headdress for Sabu. So we'll see how this ends up shaking out. Falls right out of the package there. Old Sabu. See you later. Goodbye. Let's get down to the accessories here. That's where we're going to start. Now we do get two different hands out of the package. 
All right, not really. Very, very strange right off the bat. So we do get a finger pointing hand for Sabu out of the out of the gate, we'll call it. And that's great because we can do one of those things. We need that there. But then he has a gripping hand. And guess what? We got that same gripping hand as a second hand. Doesn't make a lot of sense. So we get another gripping hand over here. Not sure we needed two of these gripping hands. Would have loved a fist of fury right here is what we should have had. So that's a little bit strange right off the bat right there. Now we do get the headdress for Sabu. You gotta say, very good looking headdress here. Gold around the top. Got a little purple accents going on. Of course, the white throughout. A different mix than what we usually get. We usually get them just kind of straight off with the jack style, almost like hair out the back. And then the Mattel one, more of like a, a real headdress, just kind of around there. I love this one. Seems to be more wrapping. Seems to be a little bit more wild, like Sabu wore his. So this headdress, very, very nice as far as Sabu goes. But now we're diving into Sabu right off the bat here. We're gonna take a look at old Sabu. First off, we're going to start at the head, and the head, to me, I don't think I could guess this is Sabu. You know what this looks like? This head looks like uh, American Werewolf in London. Oh, classic. It always comes back to werewolves on this channel, it seems like. But it looks like he's transitioning from a human into a werewolf. That's what this head sculpt reminds me of right off the bat. I don't know. It just doesn't feel Sabu-y to me. It doesn't have, I guess it does have the blade scars in the forehead. That's a nice little touch of detail there. Got two eyes, a nose, playing those human hits. Got a little bit of a, a mustache going on on Sabu. It just looks like he's transitioning into a werewolf. It doesn't look like a full-on Sabu. The hair, though, looks black, kind of stringy, long, always wet-looking. That's on brand with Sabu, no doubt about it there. Uh, getting into the body here, we do got scars on the biceps, scars on the chest and things. And I could be wrong, but I believe those had color to them before. Now there is no color, so I guess if you're uh, one of those classic... Uh, uh, fixer uppers you could put a little uh, extra detail into that if you wanted to but you do see some scars I just wish they were a little bit more pronounced we got some more on the back as well so interesting looking there now we get to the waist here and we do have his sash around the waist of course going back here but there is a little unsightly gap right there that you notice right off the bat and there's really nothing you can do about it you're just gonna see those two gaps right there would have been nice if we could get the belt maybe a little higher I guess you can't know I was going to say, I thought I could push it up a little bit, but it just goes right back down. So that's not going to work there for us. Uh, he does look like an elite style figure. Doesn't look quite like Mattel, especially those pinless joints being an eyesore. I guess cl closer to the AEW variety as of right now. I do like the one hand going up, but man, it's almost comically big. His hand is very, very large compared to the rest of his body. So it's a little bit oversized finger. I don't know. I don't know what I think about that. I do like the attention to detail here. I also have a, like a broken pushed in peg on mine that is a little bit weird on mine. So mine is a little bit off, no doubt about it, uh, compared to yours maybe. My, your mileage may vary. That's usually the way these things do go. But of course, articulation, the arms do go all the way around for us here. We do get a bicep cut. It looks like we got a little bit of butterfly shoulder action here. So that is a nice attention to detail. We usually don't get that with our elite figures. So we do have that. We do get a hula hoop at the top, not a ton of movement out of there, really no movement out of the waist. We do get the legs, we get a little bit of splits, a little bit of splits. We do get a leg that goes up, I'm checking mine, I don't want it breaking on me, that's for sure, but it looks to be okay. We do get a, bice or a bicep, how about a thigh cut going on? Double jointed knees, very, very tight. Uh, very interesting there. No boot cut, ankles back and forth, up and down, and they're continuing the tradition of no holes in the feet. So not going to fit in a peg stand or a, a ringside stand, unfortunately for us. But mine seems to be okay in the legs. Like I said, a few have broke, but I'm not going to throw, you know, shade. Is that what they call it? Shade? Because guess what? Anything mass produced, there's always going to be some that break. I don't care. Anything where it's mass produced, there's always going to be that. And, you know, one person gets that and it goes viral and it feels like everyone's going to be that way. Uh, that's not always the case. Sometimes it is, but it's not always the case. And I forgot to mention, no real movement out of the head. No side to side, left and right. Pretty much blocked up by all that hair right there. Now, the purple is very interesting as you get, like, different shades of purple. Uh, the tights up here is kind of a plain one where you get a little sparkly into the pants. And then the knee pads kind of match... Uh, up there at the top. So really kind of all over place in the purple. Wish it was all that sparkly purple throughout. White boots are what they are. That look, works for me. That feels fine. Uh, we did get the tape around the biceps as well. It's like born to be wired. I'll never forget that night against Terry Funk. I remember reading the AOL chat room play by play of what was going on and then letting my imagination take control of me. And I remember them saying, Sabu sliced open his bicep. He's wrapping up tape around it. And I remember the end, they were all caught up in that barbed wire 
absolute insanity. Wish I could have been there for that one, of course. Poor Terry Funk lost his ECW title that last that night. That was a tough night. Tough night to be a Terry fan. Uh, we do get the headdress. Fits very snug on here. You know, it, it will fall off, but I think you can get it fairly tight where it will... No, it won't stay. Thought it would. Won't stay, but it stays better than you'd imagined it would, so that's not a bad deal. And how often are you going to have him upside down with his headdress on? So that does work right here. So... For what this is, around a $50 price point, a little bit rough. You could get two elites and have some change left over, but we also have to remember uh, this is limited production. You know, we have to always remember it took about two years to get to us, so definitely not going to be for everyone, but a lot of us, I'm sure there's a lot of you guys watching this. You're watching it, Sabu, so you're probably a Sabu fan at least a little bit. A lot of us are just aching for a Sabu in the elite scale, AEW, whatever it may be. We want Sabu, so this is the closest thing as of right now we have. So it is what it is. Is it perfect? Absolutely not. It's about what I kind of expected. Maybe a little bit lesser in a few things. Uh, I wish the head was a little bit better in the face. And I do wish the hands were a little bit smaller. Wish the paint was all combined and looking like it was uniform, I guess, for lack of a better term. It is okay. So I don't know if it's quite worth 50 bucks for me. Had to have it in my collection, though, no doubt about it. But now let's do some comparisons here. How about a little Mr. Monday Night RVD? Kind of see how these compare. Sabu, not taller than RVD. I think they're about the same size, or RVD is a little bit taller. So the scale, a little bit out there, of course. you got to have Terry Funk, the greatest hits there. We can do Born to be Wired all over again. But Sabu's a guy you can bend the knee, maybe get him a little bit smaller, crouching there. But not fully in scale with our elite figures, unfortunately, uh, is the way it goes. I do have a CM Punk Jazzwares figure right here, just for a comparison as well. Kind of about the same size between those two. So it kind of depends what you're thinking there. Now, I did get the Jax Classic Superstar Sabu. A lot of good Sabus in the Jax days, for sure. This is the Classic Superstars version. You can kind of see how those look compared to each other. Definitely the best headdress is this Epic Toy one, no doubt there. And then, of course, I did get the old British Bulldog himself, Dynamite Kid. Got him to compare against Sabu. And once again, I'm, I'm thinking Sabu was probably taller than Tom Billington. I think he was. I think he was. But... That's kind of the scaling between the uncensored line. And this could be it for the uncensored line, as I did say. Not sure if this line is going to continue into the future. I guess we'll just all have to wait and see what happens in the future for this line. So one of those reviews kind of is what it is. $50 price point is pretty rough, and that two-year wait is beyond unacceptable. Hopefully, if this continues, it'll be sped up. And I do think if Epic Toys had control of this from the get-go, would have been pretty much sped up a lot better than it is right here. So nothing really against Epic Toys. They're fulfilling commitments, which you got to uh, give them a little gold medal for, is seeing this through for Cella Toys, not leave people hanging, all that kind of stuff. Because that could have happened, and we've seen that happen before in the toy game, of course. But there it is, Uncensored Sabu. What's your guys' thoughts? A pickup, a pass, a long game, the dreaded no game? Let me know your thoughts on this one in the comments down below. Of course, you made it this far. Don't forget to like the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel as we have videos every single day and then some. And of course, Patreon, your best way to support the channel. You get early access to both YouTube channel videos on top of a bunch of other stuff. Best way to support the channel. You can also support the channel at ProSNTs.com. Search Kyle Peterson. And don't forget social media, SirPaul64 on the X, V underscore Kyle underscore Peterson on threads and on Instagram. So for your uncensored epic toys, Sabu, I'm Kyle. See you guys all real soon.